It's talked about in boardrooms in the most successful companies, how business results are linked to employee engagement driven by inspiring leadership. So let's talk leadership. I'm Bill Hogg, and in this series, I talk in depth with corporate leaders about the tools and techniques they are using to build a high-performing business in today's economy. With me today is Nina Sampat, National Director of Operations, Staples Canada. But before we begin our discussion, let's get an overview of the company. Staples Canada is the largest office products company in Canada and is committed to providing Canadians with a wide choice of office services and products. Serving all types of businesses from the small home office to the large enterprise, Staples makes it easy for customers to operate their offices efficiently and affordably by offering an extensive selection of office supplies, technology, electronics, and office furniture, as well as business services including computer repair, maintenance, and copy and print services. The company employs over 15,000 associates at 320 plus stores and at their head office in Richmond Hill. It's ranked as one of Canada's top five Canadian companies and has also invested in a number of corporate giving programs that actively support environmental, educational and entrepreneurial initiatives in Canadian communities from coast to coast. For more information, visit staples.ca. Nina Sampit joined Staples in 2001 as general manager of two stores. Since then, she's steadily increased her responsibilities and is now director, national director of operations, home of the famous Easy Button. As mentioned, Staples was ranked as one of Canada's top five Canadian companies, and Nina has played a key role in building a Canadian company culture that leads in the search of office pro leads Canadians in the search of office products to say, that was easy. Welcome from Staples Canada, Nina Sampin. So Nina, let me start by saying, when you think of a high-performing work environment, what are the first things that comes to mind? Well, I think at Staples, there's two things that we really focus on uh, creating an environment around, and one is on the entrepreneurial spirit within our associates and empowerment. Uh, both of those things, I think, have really played a critical role in part in the success that we have as a company today. So um, when I think of Staples, I could be thinking about a place where I go and just buy office supplies. What do you think of Staples as? How would you describe to someone what Staples is all about? Oh, really, we strive to be a solution provider to not only small businesses, um, but we also have a, a core customer base at back to school. Um, so we really look to, to strive to be an organization that we're providing solutions to our customers. And um, you know we're, we're there to be able to provide them not only the things that they need to, for their everyday life, but also be able to um, support them in the changes that are happening in our environments every day. Uh, we know our customers are changing, um, so we continue to, to look at ways that we need to change our business as well. So would it be safe to say that of, of uh, many businesses out there in Canada, a, an organization like Staples really kind of gets the small entrepreneur to the big entrepreneur or to the large organization because you're really in business to help business. Yeah, I think that, you know our, our business is made up of a number of um, separate um, entities. We have um, Staples Advantage who really is targeted towards our large corporate customers. Um, then we have our Staples Delivery, uh, which is medium-sized customers. And then we have our retail stores, which obviously I'm a part of, that we really focus our efforts around that small business uh, customer. So let's talk a little bit about how you folks run your business. Um, one of the first things that I look at any organization when I talk to the senior leadership is I want to know whether or not they've got clarity around their vision, their mission, and their values. What say you about Staples from that perspective? Well, if, if we're talking about our vision, we, we have a vision for our customers. And for our customers, we want to be a trusted source um, in providing solutions uh, for their needs. Um, but also for our associates, we have a vision around um, we want to make them feel like they matter, their work matters, and their ideas matter. And those are the three things that, from an associate perspective, that we really strive to um, work for. And what about the values of the organization? Have you, have you got clarity around those? Um, actually, recently we actually went through um, kind of an evolution of our values. Uh, for a number of years, we had a set of values that we, you know, we've uh, 
you know, stand, stood behind that has been very successful for us. But we, we recognize that, you know, things are changing. Our customers are changing and their needs are changing and our associates are changing. And in order for us to really strive towards um, our strategy, uh, we felt there was an opportunity for us to relook at our values and whether we needed to evolve them. And we, we just went through the process of doing that. Um, and the interesting thing is, is we went through uh, the process of establishing our values by really connecting with our associates. Um, something that we did was we, we globally uh, reached out to all of our associates um, across you know, the globe and asked them about you know, what's important to them and what did they feel that as an organization we needed to have as part of our values in order for us to be able to be successful and really reach you know, our, our vision and our strategy. Um, and as part of that values jam, uh, we had a, well over 11,000 uh, submissions and uh, we, we incorporated those results as well as our annual opinion survey results from our associates and created the values that um, we're just introducing to our stores and our associates today. Excellent. So um, for someone who's watching that is maybe struggling with how to create values from the organization, share some of the techniques that you, went, uh, you, you mentioned the, the jam. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I got that quite right, but tell us a little bit about some of the techniques you used to make sure that you've got the people within the organization fully engaged in the process and it wasn't just something that, you know, two or three people wrote, it, wrote up in a room and then slapped on the wall. I think one of the unique things that we did do is we didn't rely on this to be like an HR program. I think traditionally uh, there's organizations that tend to do that where one of the things that we we did was we created a cross-functional team. Um, again, it was a global team uh, with uh, various um, members that were from different functional areas, whether it was myself from operations, we had HR representation, marketing, um, our innovation team was part of that. Um, and as a group, we really worked on, you know, what are we going to, what are we, how are we going to approach uh, going after building our values and what ways do we want to um, really achieve uh, true values that we want to live by, you know, for the next number of years. And um, as part of that, um, we created this values jam that I talked about. And as part of the values jam, we, act our, we asked our associates to tell us, you know, personally, uh, you know, what's important to them mm -hmm. and understanding that. And also, personally, what's important to them for the company. Um, and we took those results and really um, aligned them with uh, our annual opinion survey results and also aligned them to our, our, our vision and our strategy to come up with the five uh, core values that you know we, we feel that we want to um, you know stand behind right right and one of the things that I find interesting when talking to people about values is that um, is understanding what a value is and and sometimes I'll have clients will say well you know here's what I want to be and my challenge back to them is is value is not something you want to be it's about something that you are so I think it's really a, you know an incredible exercise that you went through by inviting everybody in the organization but in, in some of our prior conversation of this you know we talked about aspirational values and whether or not aspirational values were appropriate um, and, and I think we kind of agreed that values could have an element of aspiration to them that is uh, I always use the term you know on my best day this is what I'm like but they really have to be rooted in real behavior they can't just be something that's out there so how did you go through that process of really bringing all those people together and making sure that the values they brought forward really were reflective of the organization let's call it on the best day yeah and I, th and I you know we talked about our values being aspirational values and you know when I say that I'm referring to the fact that we know there's opportunity for us to be even better at delivering in those values and each each of those individual values um, and an approach that we've taken with introducing our values is really starting with our senior leadership and uh, they actually went through an exercise where they had to identify and and um, pull out which of the values do they feel they have an opportunity to do a, an even better job at and openly share that with their um, direct reports and you know that in itself speaks to you know some of our values which is you know saying it straight and being open and caring um, and you know I think that goes a long way in really leading by behavior 
and yeah. setting the standards so that the associates understand that that's what is that is what the expectation is. It's not what we expect of um, everyone else, but it really starts from the top. Well, and I think there's two points there. One that it really starts from the top, but the other thing is, and I want to come back to that a little bit. But the other thing is, is that when you hold the values up in front of the entire organization, and one of the challenges that I put forward to clients that I work with is, are you prepared to hold these up in front of the entire organization and stand there and say these are them, without feeling that the organization is going to go, yeah, right, and 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 the willingness by your uh, senior leadership to have that conversation say, I'm not perfect at this. This is a mm -hmm. value that I have to work on. It's an important value to me, but I'm not my best every day. How did that kind of conversation impact on the culture of the organization, do you think? Well, I think it goes a long way in um, making it real. Yeah. You know, I think the reality is, is that you know, a lot of the values that we've identified, um, we, we really need to be living and in order for us to, to get there we need to be able to recognize those values that we have an opportunity um, to improve on and whether that's individual as an individual leader um, or as an organization um, there's opportunities for us to really um, look at what we're doing to you know feel that we're we're really living these values day in and day out yeah and I think that uh I liked the fact that you felt that your values were going to push and challenge the organization. It wasn't just, you know, here's where we are and we're done. It was we recognize that, you know, we can be better and we can challenge ourselves. And that starts to push back with the leadership team as to how they're going to up their game. Now, one of the things that I find that uh, so many boardroom tables are frankly surrounded by mistrust by the senior leadership team. Not that someone's going to steal out of my wallet, but the trust that comes from when I say I'm going to do something that my, my fellow leaders have total confidence, the fact that I will do that. How did you grapple with that issue at your leadership table when you acknowledged that the values were not something that we were just you know, it was status quo, but we had to challenge ourselves. How did you get yourselves to feel comfortable as leaders that your fellow leaders were prepared to step up and do the work necessary? Um, that actually already exists in our organization. We really have an environment where people aren't afraid to speak up. Um, we, a we actually have, a, I believe, a, v a very unique uh, avenue where any associate across the country can ask any question, address any concern, bring up any ideas directly to our president, Steve Mattias. And um, it's amazing, because we get anywhere from 80 to 100 submissions a month. Uh, to me, that really speaks to um, our associates feeling comfortable to, to say what's on their mind. Um, even in our home office in Richmond, in Richmond Hill, we have um, you know, quarterly um, town hall meetings where you know, there's, a, there's associates asking, asking questions anywhere from, you know, when are we going to get our parking lot fixed because there's potholes to, you know, what are we going to do to drive our stock? And, you know, our, our leadership aren't afraid to answer any of those questions. So if we feel that there's an opportunity for us to be um, called out or to be recognized for where we may be falling short on some of these values, I think we have an environment where that's not um, something that's new. Um, or not encouraged. Now one of your values, and I, I don't remember the specific wording, I apologize, but was about the ability to speak out. Right. Um, when you make a statement like that, you have to support that with actual activities like the email opportunity. What other kinds of things have you done to sort of foster that openness and that sort of communication? I think, again, I think our leadership um, really sets the example. Um, Again, I feel it's unique where in our organization, it's very common for our, any leadership, whether it's our president, whether it's our VPs, whether it's our district managers, are accessible to our associates. They're having lunch with them every day. Uh, they walk by their desk, you know, very often. They aren't in this isolated area where they don't have that opportunity to really connect with the associates. So people feel comfortable. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for our district managers to be eating lunch in the lunchroom when they're visiting stores. Um, so they have an opportunity to have those real conversations uh, with the associates, not only about to get to know them personally, but also to be able to ask those type of questions that, you know, are on their mind, um, that are, might be out there that, you know, people are hesitant to, to talk about. Well, we're going to talk about a little bit more of that ourselves after this break. <laughs> 